So in an interview yesterday with Ariel Hawani, Paige Van Zandt was talking about how she's on the last fight of her UFC contract and that she feels like her current deal has her severely underpaid. And online, I saw a lot of talk about this interview and I actually went out of my way to go listen to it and see if people were taking her out of context or not. And the talk seemed to be around the idea that she was pointing out that she makes a lot more money posting on Instagram than she does fighting. And she feels like that isn't fair. And if that in, in and of itself was her whole, whole argument, it would be a pretty foolish argument because these are two separate ways to get paid. There's two different value propositions there. Uh, what I'll do is I'll play what she actually said, and then I'll give my response to it after. So this is the first um, part of the her response. I am. I okay. am. But I, I do think that my value is significantly higher than what I am currently I mean, that. Yes. It's the yes. like professional way to You want a pay that. raise. I do want to, I want okay. a significant pay raise to be completely honest. Yes, I appreciate um, that. And not transparent. Yeah, I do think that my value is really low. I look at like, you know, it's, I think, okay, my manager said I do need to start talking highly, Talk away. highly about myself and Talk standing away. up for myself. Yes. So yes. when, you know, when I fought Michelle Watterson, yeah. we had some of the highest views on Fox in like years and years and years. We set the record, we blew everyone out and we had like amazing views when we were on Fox. And there you go. Please. You're vibing right now. I don't want to interrupt. Okay. okay. So, uh, killed it on Fox. Killed it on Fox yes. with that. I feel like coming off of Dancing with the Stars, with the fan base I've been able to build up, doing my book tour, and I've just been extremely accomplished outside of outside of the UFC sure, as well sure. as in the UFC. And I see these other stars that cross over from other organizations. Um, take CM Punk. I, I don't think I have the, quite the star. I don't know. The star value CM Punk does. Just different industries. Sure. Huge fan base where he comes from. But um, who's the other football player? Greg Hardy. Greg Hardy, yes. him coming over from football, yeah. um, all these other stars and what the USC values them at. And I'm not saying that they're devaluing me now because this is an extremely old contract, but I do know how much money I make compared in comparison to them. And I do want to show the UFC, like I'm so much more than just a star outside of fighting. Like I'm a star in the UFC as well. Like yeah, I yeah. am really talented. I've been working hard. I've just had a string of unfortunate luck with my arm. And I think I need to like put in perspective, perspective, all the things that I have done. You know, I've had um, five wins in the UFC, four finishes, um, two arm bars, one knockout, and just an awesome record. I've been the main event twice, and I think someone with those accolades should be paid more. Yes. Well done. Thank you. That Look was at that, great. Austin. That was Thank good. Right? Yeah, so that's the main part of her argument. I think this is the part of the argument that's actually fair because she's not talking about Instagram in this particular part of the argument. She's just talking about what she's worth as an MMA fighter and what she's worth to the UFC as a promotion. Uh, so most of my response is going to be directed towards this. And to be fair, at a glance, she's making a lot of fair points here. I actually don't find this to be that unreasonable that, as far as what she's saying. Uh, but that little clip that people are seeing online about Instagram, we'll play that as well. Um, that's a little further down the line. So right about here. Like I make way more money sitting at home. Really? Posting pictures on Instagram than I do fighting. Really? My, with endorsement deals and wow. everything I pull in from social media, I, I mean, I would actually be at a loss just taking a yeah. fight and focusing. Wow. If I were to stop everything I do outside of fighting and just fight, I would be at a loss. Really? Financially. Oh, with by, a, yeah. by a yeah. long shot. So wow. it's just, you know, with TV endorsements, with all the things I do and um, coming off of Sports Illustrated, it's like, you know what, I, if I'm going to keep breaking my arm, if I'm going to keep bleeding and sacrificing for this sport, I feel like I think it's all fighters and all female fighters need to be recognized. And I was able to sit down with Adidas and do a stadium interview with other successful female fighters. And, you know, one thing I did mention is when I did my contract negotiation for my last, my, the last time, um, you know, the talk was, I can't pay you more than a female champion. It's like, okay, but why are you comparing me to just, yeah, yeah. just women? Yeah. We should be, all of us should be getting paid more in general and especially the women. And then especially based on your star power. Yeah. That's uh, who said that? Uh, no comment. Okay. Interesting. That is interesting. As you said, that was a long time ago. It was a long time like ago. Three, three or four years ago, right? Yeah, it wasn't the Fertitas at all. But it's like okay, someone, um, you know, I just, I shouldn't, we shouldn't be based on, I sure. can't pay you more than a female champion. Well, why isn't she, why is she getting so much less than the male champion? Absolutely. And she I feel like champion, period. She's just champion, yeah. period. It shouldn't yeah. be just based on. Yeah. So that's the clip there. As far as what they were saying at the end, it's not as though female champions are paid. It's never less than male champions. Each individual fighter is paid on what they can draw. So a female champion like Ronda Rousey made a lot more than many male champions. Whereas a male champion like Conor McGregor obviously out, outpaces the female. So what you're paid isn't necessarily based off of where you're ranked so much as it's based off of what you're able to sell. You can be ranked very low but be a huge draw and be able to make a lot of money. You can be ranked high and nobody wants to see you. And you're you're just going to make whatever standard in your contract and whatever the standard um, escalators are for every win that you get. So with that being said, as far as the Instagram thing, I think a lot of people took that to me. You know, look at how bad the UFC is, is that they pay you so poorly that you can make more money on Instagram. I think if anything, that's more of a positive thing towards the UFC that the UFC was able to build her up in such a way where there are plenty of women on Instagram, plenty of women who look better than her on Instagram who aren't able to make the kind of money that she does. And the reason why she makes the money that they don't is because of her exposure with the UFC. So in that way, yes, you could say that the UFC could pay her more as a separate argument, but 
you, you'd also have to acknowledge that her making the money that she does on Instagram is definitely related to the fact that she was signed by the UFC and that she was a part of the UFC. As for her first argument, uh, where she was saying that she feels like she's a bit, pretty big draw, one of the points that she brought up was that she was in two main events. Uh, she also talked about ratings being very high for a fight with Michelle Watterson. To me, those are all fair points. I think as far as what she makes right now, I think she's a little bit under 50 grand a fight. Um, if that's actually accurate, uh, I should probably try to pull it up right now while I'm talking. If, if that's accurate, then she's severely underpaid. Um, but even still, like to me, I, I think she's going to get a pretty good offer, whether it's from the UFC or whether it's from someone else. She she can definitely draw a lot of interest. I think that she does draw an increase in ratings. So for her to make the argument that she did, at least on the first half, where she was talking specifically about the amount of viewers that she's able to get, talking about how she's able to be put in main events and the UFC believes in her and promotes her, those are all fair points. Now, what do we have here? So 43, 43, and 5. Okay, yeah. So if it's 43 and 43, then yeah, I, I agree with her. She is underpaid for what she's able to do from a promotional standpoint. So when she does finish out this contract and she does get a new contract, she should definitely be paid more than she's making. I think at least with the UFC, she can definitely bring a lot more value than that contract seems to be indicating. Uh, here's Greg Hardy, who she, she was referring to. She actually made more than Greg Hardy because Hardy did not get a win bonus, which is interesting that she would bring Greg Hardy up. Then I guess it's just the fact that he's guaranteed more um, in a loss. I would look at Joseph Benavides, some of the other fighters on this card. Dennis Bermudez, yeah. So, so I mean, for Paige fans, and I, I think she she's on point in saying that for what her value is to the UFC, I, I think she does sell a lot. I think she definitely pulls in ratings, and to be making forty three and forty three and being able to pull the way that she does, that it, it seems like she is underpaid right now. So the good news for her is that she is going to be able to fight her contract out, and once that contract is fought out, then from there, um, either the UFC is going to make a fair offer for her, or someone like Bellator is going to be able to step in, take advantage of her, and I think. If you can sign her to a similar deal to what she's on right now, if you're Bellator, if you can pay her 50 and 50, for example, which is a decent increase for her, um, you're going to be getting a good return on that investment. Actually, you're going to be able to make your, mo make your money back, which is fairly uncommon, it seems like, with a lot of these high-name free agents. A lot of times with these big-name free agents, um, you see someone like Bellator, if they actually do decide to fight with the UFC over the free agent, they haven't been doing that as much lately. You remember when they did that with Brian Bader, they did it with Gagar Musashi, they did it with Roy McDonald, and it seemed like they kind of stopped doing that. I think a big reason why they stopped doing that is because they realized that they were paying a lot more for these fighters than they were getting back in return for the amount of people who were actually going out of their way to watch them. I think with Paige Van Zandt, she might actually be worth the money there. Uh, what her what she actually is worth, that's hard to say. Uh, but to me, if you look at what she makes compared to other fighters, I, I think it actually is safe to say that she is a bit underpaid right now. Um, so t typically when a fighter does go out and say, hey, I'm not making as much as I'm worth, uh, oftentimes I think they're overinflating their value. I think in this case, Paige Van Zandt actually does have a point.